And what's up there YouTube? This is Stampede Valkyrie again. I'm making another quick video because I was asked another question that I figured it's easier to answer via video than it is to try to explain via forums or via text, even though there's already information out there about this. Um, I'm actually, the question was asked me directly was how do you set the gear timing or what does gear timing mean on a Aerodynic, either the Model 24 or the Model 25. So what I've got here is I'm currently working on this bar, doing a little bit of a cleanup and uh, getting it restored, is I've got a Model 24, this is a mid-length bar, this is an M-E-A-H. I believe there's a takedown option on here, so this is an M-E-A-H-T, but let's keep this on track. So. Two things worth noting when setting the gear timing. Uh, the timing numbers that are usually given to you by Federal or found on forums or even in my posts, if you look at my other YouTube videos, the numbers all relate to, if you see numbers like 8, 4, 2, whatever in my post, the numbers all relate to the numbers that sit on the actual reflectors themselves, as you can see here, so on, so on and so forth. Those are the numbers that matter, and if you look real close, if the camera's gonna let me do it, you might be able to see them in the sunlight, You'll see that there's numbers and corresponding numbers associated on that gear, like there's zero, two, so on and so forth. It goes from zero all the way to, if you look, I think 18, uh, well, technically 19. So zero to 19, but 18 is the last numbered one. Even though all the gears on an Aerodynic have these numbers, for example, here's an Aero, our idler gear, and as you can see, there's the number there. The idler gears don't matter what this number is set to. What matters is, what the reflectors are set to. So if I wanted to set a flash pattern on this Aerodynic, for example, have both of them facing me, uh, what I can do is aim the gears the way I wanted them to be, like so, uh, then go ahead and install the idler gears, and away it goes, the timing is set. Now there's two things that actually come into play here that are, that are kind of important. Number one, if you're gonna set the gears or do anything with the gears, make sure you remove the motor and the gearbox. Just unbolt it, doesn't have to unwire it, just remove it. Uh, the reason for that is because it will not allow you to set the gears. You'll end up stripping the worm gear. As you can see on the back of the motor, I can't really, I don't have three hands, so I can't point it out. Don't strip that worm gear off. That thing is like gold. I have a hard time finding them. Uh, they're plastic, they're old, and they're fragile. So take it easy with them. So with that out of the way, as you can see, that would mount to these two guys here. You then have free reign to do what you want. Uh, the other thing that I get asked a lot is once you actually set the gears where you want them to be is how do you deal with the center rotator gears, well, or the center gears. So as you can see on this, if the light actually is going to let me do it, there's a gear here, my finger's kind of turning. Well, this gear connects to a belt which goes under the speaker and then comes up to this side, and there's some light here so you can see this, and connects to this guy. Again, then there's numbers on this, if you look close enough. Those numbers don't really mean anything. All that, all that means really is that this is a gear connected to another gear via a belt. Oftentimes I get asked, well, how do you sync the innermost rotators? Like, how do you do that? It, it's actually very hard to do. Well, on this bar, it's not really too hard because essentially there's no light on the inside or on the inside there. Uh, what you would do is set your, your gear settings, as you can see here, set them there, drop your idler in, and away it goes. However, on some of the lights, getting to that center gear setting is a real pain in the butt. It's actually a real hassle. One of the things that I've noticed, there's two ways to do it. First one is to actually just take all these little nuts off. Be careful, because it's an old bar, you're likely to snap them. Take the supporting aluminum frame underneath off, lift it up, get to the belt, and then make your adjustments from there. The second way to do it, and what I like to call my cheat, is to actually force one gear up while moving the other gear down. This will actually force the two one gear to ride over the other one, and then allow you to spin the gear where you want and then snap it into position. Be careful doing this though, as you can see, I'll try to demo what I'm talking about. You want to be careful because again, this is old, this is not obviously brand new. Uh, this bar in particular I think is like 1984. But if you're looking at this, maybe it's easier for me to do it on the other side. If you're looking at this, like on this side, you'll see I'm going to drop an idler gear here in. And say, <clears throat> say this is a flasher, uh, the one that I just dropped in, and you wanted to change it like you will on some other bars. What you can do is lift up. If this is a flasher, you're not going to be able to actually pull that out. But what you can do is put some pressure down on one and lift up on the other. As you can see, I'm, I'm only using one hand, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, there is some play there. You'll see that lift up. The trick is to press down on one and lift up on the other to the point that the one can ride over. You don't want the gears grinding on each other, but one rides over the other. When you get where you want it to be, you then let the pressure come off. It'll flatten itself back out and away you go. 
Yes, that's a little cheap. It may not be the right way to do it. However, on in this bar's instance, since I don't have to do it, I don't have to worry about it. The correct way to do it officially would be to take all these little screws off these guys here. You can see on this bar, these guys. Take them all off, lift the frame up. You're gonna have to take this apart too. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, then actually do the, uh, sink the gears. But if you use my cheat, you don't have to do that. Just an FYI, other people I've seen do that too. It's not my creation, so I'm not gonna take credit for it. So back on the topic of setting gear settings and timing. So here's the things you need to know. You obviously, after, after I discussed, you know that there's numbers on these, uh, on, the, on the actual rotators themselves. There's also numbers on the idler gear, so on and so forth. Idler gear, remember, no, no reflector. It just sits in the middle and it keeps the timing going. So if I wanted to set this timing to say zero, zero, I could spin both rotators to zero. They're facing me and then here's what's important. Look on the base of the bar. Now this is prevalent on the Model 25. This is also prevalent on the Model 24. However, the mini aerodynamics, the Model 22s, it is not. Uh, I have several Model 22s that there is no timing mark, but that's what this little mark is. It's a mark to time for these rotators. So what I would do is line that up to be zero. I would then come over here and line that one up to be zero as long as it met that mark. Take my idler gear, be sneaky about it, Obviously, it's not going to be perfect because I'm doing it with one hand, but play along like I got it right <laughs> and then drop drop that into place. And as long as these two both sit at zero, which is what I wanted, obviously they're not because I'm doing it with one hand. Now they're both timed. You basically just drop in the, uh, the C-clamp there in the middle or the, the C-clip and away it goes. You'll see that these guys spin and they are synced. So they both spin in the same direction. So I may not have gotten zero, but I got them close enough that they're almost exact. Kind of makes sense. The inner part is the same way. What you do is you take your next idler gear and as long as these sit at where they're supposed to be, say zero, you then come in here, sneak the idler gear in the middle and drop it down and away you go. The last piece, after you put the C-clips back on the top, which that one's missing and this one would get, will be then to reinstall the motor and the gearbox. Hold on, pardon me. Motor and gearbox, like so, back into here, have it make contact, and away you go. It's, it's done. That's setting your timing in a nutshell. Uh, the easiest way to do it, to be honest with you, is to take the motor off, like you'll see the motor back there. Again, this bar was, uh, looks like 1984. Um, take the motor off so that way that gear, you know, the clutch gear and whatever is not making contact. Then go ahead and pop the C-clips off, pop the idler gears off, so on and so forth, like these guys, and then have at it. The other thing worth noting real quick since we've got the idler gears off is this is where you're actually going to want to apply your, uh, your grease when you actually put these back together. You don't want to put these back in dry. You want to make sure there's some grease on here. Now you don't got to crow crazy, but just basically have it so there's at least a decent, uh, I'm going to say like a layer of anybody who's ever worked on firearms before and used grease and like M1 Garands and so on and so forth, they'll know what I'm talking about. You don't want to go nuts. A little bit of grease does go a long way. Uh, the other thing you'll also want to do is make sure you grease these guys too on the rotators. Uh, if you're looking at an idler gear because it's easier since it's off, you'll see that there's a hole right there on, the, on that base. These gears are the same as these gears. So there's a hole on this rotator that you can actually go in and actually put some grease in there and away it goes. You'll keep the bar greased that way as well. So that's about it. I wanted to keep this simple. Um, timing is actually fairly easy to do. It's just the center rotator piece. It's kind of a pain in the butt. If you've got a Model 25, you really don't have to worry about that as there's no speaker grill and you have access to everything. However, the same general principles work. If you're setting timing on an aerodynamic, keep in mind the numbers on the gears themselves, even though there's numbers on this gear too, the idler, it doesn't matter on the idler, it's the rotators that make the difference. Time your rotators the way you want them to be, drop your idler gear in the middle, and do the same thing as you work your way down the bar. So whatever you want, this is how you set your custom flash settings, and you can have at it, and it gets pretty interesting, especially with the 10 rotator versions. Hopefully that was helpful, YouTube. Talk to you later.